Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next SOAP live session today, number 12, the August update release. Once again, with our CTO, Sinisha. Welcome, Sinisha. Hello. As usual, this session will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel at XOAP underscore IO. But back to business, topic of this event today is product updates, news and features, and a little bit of roadmap. Everything we discuss today can be found on our docs page on the website XOAP.io slash docs or go through the menu. We have a lot uh, to show today, so I will keep it short and hand over to you. It's your turn and maybe we can start with uh, what the people see first, the dashboards. Uh, sure, we can. Uh, not much uh, to add to this topic. So we reworked a little bit the image management dashboards for the runs. So we added some more details to those. Uh, so in the past, we had like success and failed. Uh, now we have stopped uh, running and no runs. Um, same thing for the images overview here. So that's just a small thing. And when we are at images, um, maybe also a small thing to share is we added some sort of information here to give you a little bit more insights into what's actually happening during your image run. And we added two new uh, um, types of information here. So first of all, the runtime duration so that you can see directly how long did the image uh, creation process uh, take. And um, we also added the image ID that is created. So now, for example, if you create an image on AWS, you directly also get the image ID that was created for that image. This should help you uh, yeah, take this information, put it in scripted actions to deploy a new um, virtual machine, for example, um, so to make the workflow a little bit easier. Yeah, besides that, uh, a larger update for resources. So we announced that in one of the last update sessions, we would introduce uh, versioning for all the resources and that is now available. So if you go to resources, you now have uh, also two new columns here, uh, one for the version, the latest version is displayed here and one for the version message you can add. How does that look like? So if I go into the details of a resource, so typically when you upload a resource for the first time into the resources area, it will get a version like 001 starting from below. If I look at the version history, for example, for this for this script here, we can see it was uh, created with a 001 somewhere around April. And then every change that was done to the script um, was um, counted upwards. So if you don't change anything for the script, um, you have the chance if you say something, I will show it in a minute uh, to give it a custom version. But if you don't do anything and just leave it as it is, you will always like um, be counted upwards in those uh, smaller iterations here. Uh, what you can also do is, for example, you can uh, choose two versions and click uh, on the difference. So here you see the latest version. There was some sort of test message integrated here, just for an, as an example. So you can actually see the differences. And what you can also do is, um, I will close this now. If you go into edit resource content, um, and if I now remove that thing here and click on save, then you get this resource version model where you have uh, the chance to change like change like actually the version number here to your own needs and uh, you see i'm actually uh, currently i looked at this version now i save it again didn't give it any message but now you can see from a version perspective uh, there's a big change here so depending if you do a big change to your scripts uh, that you use, for example, in image management or scripted actions, you are able to give it uh, also a custom version number depending on the changes you made to the script. So that's yeah, one of the things. It makes it more flexible for customers. They have dedicated version numbers in their change and release process. So can, they can adapt the versioning in this scripting format. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, depending on that, so we now have the central versioning. If we now go to, for example, uh, scripted actions, you now also see 
which version is actually used inside a scripted action. So the reason why we did this was that if you upload a resource, um, you assign it to a scripted action, a colleague changes something and now your scripted action fails because of this mm. change. Um, we wanted to make sure that if you create a scripted action, that you are able to assign it a specific version and you can change it, for example, if you now made a change to the script, and you can do this also directly here in scripted actions. Um, if you change something and you get a new version, then you're able to like choose the version that's actually uh, verified by you, that it does what it should do. And you can still um, test newer versions by creating a new scripted action with the newest version, check until everything is fine, and then move forward with that. So that's something that we did here. And um, yeah, you have the same capabilities to, um, to, to edit the script. That's basically the version that is assigned here. And you can then move forward, also create a new version out of that, assign it to the scripted action, and move forward. So that should make uh, scripted actions more stable for the use case when multiple people are using like one workspace. Mm -hmm. uh, the other location where we integrated also scripted versions is the provisioners area. So if you look at image management, you see there are provisioners created like the PowerShell script provisioner and there's also a script attached here with the version. So what you can do here now is for specific types, so for example, for DSC local configuration, you can select the source file and the version. And the same thing applies to uh, the, the file provisioner, the Linux shell script provision and the PowerShell script provisioner. So whenever you choose something, you're able to also choose the version that is then um, attached to the specific provisioner. This gives you also more control of the changes that are done. And um, in addition to that, for the builder configurations, if you look at the Azure side of things, and we go into the advanced options, and you also have here custom data. So things that are actually done when the machine comes up uh, and that are run there. We also added those capabilities here for the custom data file and for the user data file. So you also have a versioning um, enabled here. Yeah, that's the bigger part of this. Uh, yeah, I say a, a versioning upgrade for the resources that we did here. Short and, question to the yeah. scripts. Uh, to the scripts, uh, they are CLI and PowerShell scripts. Uh, but you mentioned before also BSAP. Uh, the question was, uh, when will be something like BSAP available in scripted actions? So uh, BICEP, we are working on it. The first, thing, BICEP, the first thing that will come is um, um, Google support. So mm -hmm. um, that's something that will be available next. And if we are now like at, at the roadmap kind of things, uh, so Google support we will have shortly for uh, scripted actions available. That implies also adding it to connections. And we will also add to the connections area um, in the next one or two sprints the capability to use those API tokens that we set. So if you need access from external, you don't need to use username and password. You can create um, your API tokens. And that will also include adding Google credentials so that, yeah, we are from that cloud, major cloud perspective, we are then, uh, I think, on a good track to have the major ones um, Mm -hmm. included in our solution okay yes other questions mario no for that <laughs> it's fine <laughs> okay. yeah so that's basically it from my side for today so it doesn't look like much but actually we have updated three modules so we have versioning enabled in image management config management and in the central resources area that's uh, available to use uh, from today on and um, yeah that's it from my side for today then i have uh, a question to the roadmap yeah sure uh, we announced uh, something small something nice which is called avd manager yeah yep um what is the planning over there and maybe just on the voice streams Inisha, what is the plan with avd manager and when do you think it will be the first version available 
All right. So uh, we talked about it in the past. So with Cryptid Actions, we are able to uh, deploy resource groups, virtual networks, Azure virtual host pools. Um, you can also um, use Azure PowerShell to log off users and stuff like that. Um, also based on a schedule that we announced like last time. So that gives us the possibility to spin up an, um, um, a complete Azure virtual desktop infrastructure with scripted actions here. Um, what we are planning to add is now also in platform management, there will be a new uh, a menu item um, called Azure virtual desktops. And that's basically um, a, a front end to also manage Azure virtual desktop infrastructure. So based on the connections you have here, uh, we will be able to get all the information regarding um, the resource groups and the host pool and the su subscriptions you have attached um, to XOP. And there you will be able to uh, manage all kinds of things like um, add storage accounts, uh, manage uh, the host pools, the applications, the workspaces and everything around that to make that mm -hmm. thing um, completely um, um, usable for Azure Virtual Desktop environment. And that okay, should cool. also close the complete gap. So we have image management to create the hosts. So the images can be created. We can deploy the applications. We can configure those hosts, either if you are using like dedicated uh, workspaces that are uh, used in a longer time frame, or you are using something like pooled workspaces where you just uh, update the image and then don't manage them too much anymore. So that will make yeah. uh, the complete solution uh, a really cool thing for Azure Virtual Desktop environment. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Sounds great. Uh, I opened the website. We created a landing page for it. So everybody who's interested in um, get notified if there are any updates available over here. Uh, and um, especially what uh, Sinisha uh, said is the whole process of creating an image, customizing the AVD, deploying software packages, and this across accounts and subscriptions. There's, that will be a great thing at the end. Yeah. Uh, Sinisha, for the timeline, what do you think, just for the timeline, we will be able to see the very first shot of it? So we are planning to make it available as soon as we have it on the front end. So I'm, I'm uh, thinking about having the first uh, preview version, something around the next six to eight weeks. And the uh, time frame is uh, to yeah get it up and running until the end of the year. Cool. I will share the information also in the chat and we will of course upload the video. So first of all, nothing from my side to add. Thank you, Sinisha, for the insights. Um, dear community, follow our channel and have a look at our newest blog post. For example, one of the newest are how to redeploy the bare metal deployment of OS, an operating system with XOAP, and also uh, register for upcoming updates regarding the new topic, Azure Virtual Desktop Manager, on our website, um, go to the blog, check it out. And we wish you all a successful week. Uh, thank you, Sinisha. Thank, thank you, you all for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye. See you, bye-bye.